In my last video, I showed you how we replace school bus windows that are leak and draft prone with nice watertight RV windows. But I think tonight we're going to shift gears a little bit and I'm going to continue my schoolie maintenance series and show you the proper steps to maintain your Allison automatic transmission. I'm not going to lie to you, the transmission in this bus is my least favorite thing about it. It's the dreaded Allison AT545. I know, I'm embarrassed too. But hey, a guy fell in love with the bus and sometimes you just have to overlook certain aspects to get the job done. Well, we're leaving town in two days. I've got about a thousand miles to put between me and there and back here again. And that means this transmission needs to be performing its best. So we're gonna do a full service on it today and I wanna show you the steps that I take to make sure this junky old transmission will keep on kicking for, well, as long as I need it to. We're gonna do a full fluid flush, filter change, external filter change, anything else that pops into my mind along the way. My name's Chuck Cassie, thanks for tuning in. Don't go anywhere. I don't care what transmission you have, this is something you need to know about. Okay, the everlasting punch list of things I gotta do for this trip. Proper transmission maintenance starts with using the right kind of fluid. And on these Allison's, there is nothing better than Allison Transcend fluid. This is actually made by Castrol because Allison doesn't make their own fluid, but it is their formulation. And I believe they just came out with an even newer, greater flavor. I think it's grape or bubble gum, but it's supposed to perform better than this. This is a full synthetic fluid. The reason I like to run this in my transmissions, even the old ones that are designed for, I think it was Dextron 3, this synthetic fluid doesn't break down at high temperatures. And because my Allison AT545 does not have a lockup torque converter, that means it's always generating heat. It's a real bummer and we all know heat is what kills automatic transmissions. Well, thanks to the thermal properties of Transcend, it's gonna maintain lubrication and all the other good things that it does up to very high temperatures, which are pretty likely because I'm gonna be running this goose pretty hard. The next thing we have to do, since we're dropping the pan, is replace the internal transmission filter. The internal filter lives in the oil pan of the transmission, and that means we're gonna be replacing the transmission pan gasket. I've been flattening this between a book and a brick and a piece of wood for the past couple of days, so it'll lay nice and flat. And my particular transmission also has an external filter. This is a spin-on type. When you're doing this job, you want to make sure you replace this one as well. Between these three service items, that's everything you can do on your own to service your Allison transmission. Your transmission may be different. A lot of the newer ones, the MD3060, for example, it uses double cartridge filters that are actually internal. They don't look anything like this. When you get your filter kit, it'll probably come with a pickup tube like this, maybe a few O-rings and other, you know, bits and bobs. It'll all make sense when you get in there, trust me. Just don't be afraid to get in there, drop that pan, see what you're working with because you gotta take care of your transmission. Let's get under there and drain that fluid. Oh look, just as I suspected, the drain plug. So this little guy, if you look, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but it's been leaking around the pan gasket. That's not the reason why I'm under here servicing it though. I'm really under here because the fluid on the dipstick, it smells like burnt hair. And instead of looking like delicious cherry red cough syrup, it's brown. Oh, what a guess. We're just gonna... And so a lot of times this will tell you, well, the condition of your transmission, but it'll also tell you <laughs> how long before you need to start budgeting for a rebuild. And uh, I'm pretty sure, well, I'm already planning on swapping this transmission for a beefier one, but I really love to get a, a little more out of it. Oh boy, somebody had some, wow, wow. Really had something to prove there. <laughs> Easy, pal. So let's just see how gross this fluid is. So. If it's a healthy transmission, this fluid should look like cherry cough syrup. I'm pretty sure this is gonna look like, yeah, it's that really dark, shameful red. All right, over here, as promised, is 
our dipstick tube. This is literally where the dipstick goes. What do you want to say? Inch and an eighth? Oh, I really feel like it's inch and a sixteenth. Let's see. Oh my goodness, I was right. Oh, oh, a fella's gonna pull a hamstring here doing this. What are we gonna brace off the? Yeah, what are we? <laughs> How does this even work? Oh, nice. Kickback got me there. So we're pulling this out. Now, if you're just doing a straight up fluid change, you don't have to pull the dipstick tube, but because we're dropping this whole pan, you want to get the dipstick tube out of there. Okay, I think we've probably drained enough. If you look under here, we've got one, two, three, four, 69 bolts that hold the oil pan on. And we're just going to go ahead and plug this up. We'll let that finish later. And we're gonna get this oil pan down. And if you don't have one, you know, if you're the kind of person who looks for an excuse to buy a tool every now and again, these little electric ratchets, <laughs> jobs like this, they really bring home the bacon. Let's see, even if you're a vegetarian, I think you'd still appreciate it too. We're just going to, yep. Right size, first try, love it. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. This is the part where it, uh, so we're going to drop it down and keep the pan right below it because, oop, we're hung up on that guy gonna drip doesn't that look cool it's like a scene from alien look at this thing so this is your valve body here that uh, it's kind of like a mechanical brain I guess if you don't recognize it from earlier this is our transmission fluid filter um, looking inside it doesn't look too awful we'll pull the pan out in a second and we'll look inside there and uh, see how much of the transmission metal has ended up in the pan. <laughs> Hopefully not a ton. So our next step is under here inside the transmission is one last bolt. We'll drop the filter down. Let's see if I can shine a light there. That's okay. That's pretty good. Let's see if it's the same size. As, I think it is, or I, I actually think it's a half inch. And I think that's what those are. We'll see. We'll just see. Oh, yeah. Oh, goodness. I don't know who worked on this, but they definitely had something to prove. Okay. Mm. And, oh, there it goes. So there's our filter element. And I think what we'll do, we'll just go ahead and let this drip dry for a minute. While it does that, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do earlier, which is change the external filter, which is like more like a conventional oil filter. And it's just right under here. I almost wonder, I wonder if a guy could just stick his. Nope, <laughs> not, not gonna same tough guy. Put the filter on. I'm going to go grab my favorite strap wrench. We'll pop that filter off and spin on a new one. And hopefully by then this thing will be done bleeding out and we'll put our new filter on there's this tube actually pulls off i'll just go ahead and do it and there's a little o-ring oh, still in there there's an o-ring that goes around this and seals that into that port and um i actually i if as long as this isn't damaged i prefer to use the one that came with the transmission instead of the one that comes in the filter kits now if you don't know already i love these strap wrenches they are just universal in their uses around here and the fact that you can throw a half inch extension on them for times like this it's very nice so we're just gonna do that look at this look at that look at this look at that 
Would you look at this? Yeah, it's going right there. We're kind of getting bogarted a little bit by the yeah, split loom there on that fuel line. I don't know. Just get out of the way. There we go. Yeah. So just take my word if you can't tell what the hell's going on. There is a filter up there and I'm using my strap wrench to oh, break it free. There we go. And try to catch anything that doesn't dribble down my arm. Oh, oh yes. We have lived good clean lives. And so now here's our new filter. I'm just gonna take a little stuff that splashed on my arm. We're gonna go back up with it. Try to get a minimal amount of dirt into the filter and just spin that guy on. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and shift this back over. Cause you know, it's still a crime scene over here. Nice, good and tight. Just a little, just to make sure it's good. It's not going anywhere. Hard to grip these suckers, you know? Another cool thing to do when you're doing this, because uh, it's easy to make this mistake, is uh, check and make sure that when you took the old filter off, that the uh, O-ring came with it. See that uh, rubber O-ring here? If you don't, there it is. Because if you double stack your O-rings, you're gonna leak. And if you leak, there's a good chance bad things are gonna happen to you. Now, coming up next, in your filter kit, probably came with some O-rings like this. And the size that you will use will depend on the size of tube that you have. Since I've got the littler tube, I'm gonna use the littler O-ring. And before I get too far, I'm gonna make sure that I pull out. Cause since I was just talking about double stacking O-rings, there's probably one up in here, yeah, look, <laughs> got it. Yeah, that's not going back in, we'll put that in our bucket. Woo! And this guy with our fresh O-ring can go back up in there. We'll see if it'll stay, it might not. Might have to get the filter back on. Yeah, it's pretty much as I expected. That's okay, there we go. Now, new filter guy, your new filter will probably come with a couple of different sized inserts for this part here. It doesn't take a keen eye to realize that's too big for that. So we're going to swap it for the smaller one. And this was all included in what they call the filter kit. And this is old technology, honestly. I'm probably the last guy in the world changing the filter on an AT545. Everyone's either avoiding these all together or swapping them out for whatever they read is best on the internet. Okay, so we're gonna stick that on there. Nice and good. And that means we're gonna need to probably rotate it around. I'm not really sure. I think it goes to the back. I recall for the whole line up. Yep. We'll get that one started. Make sure we're still in there. And snug it up. Cool. So we have a new filter on, and that means that we are done dripping down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this oil pan out and the bucket full of our old fluid, and we'll just look and see how bad things have been inside this transmission. We got that over here, and let's look at what we got. This was our old, old filter, no use for that. And then our other old filter, also no real use for this. And now we're gonna dump this guy out and just take a look at the pan. It's like panning for gold, except you don't wanna see anything shiny in this one. 
And so far, I don't see a ton of shiny stuff. Honestly, could have been worse. So this here is a giant magnet and it's to collect all of the pieces of metal that this transmission has been chewing through as it destroys itself. Not too bad, really. And this pan plug also has a magnet and it's not too bad either. I'm really grateful for that. <laughs> that means I don't have to plan on replacing this transmission quite yet. So we're just gonna wipe it down, get rid of this old leaky gasket, clean it up, get the new gasket ready, maybe get a new pair of gloves, and then it'll be time to finish this job. Okay, look, we're supposed to be done by now, but I got this idea. I really want to install a transmission temperature gauge on that guy so I can see just how quickly I'm sending it to an early grave. And, so, and I already bought it. So what I'm going to do on that side where the dipstick could have gone but didn't go and just had a plug, I'm going to go ahead and I bought it. Where is it? Yep. Drill America. Thank you. I've got a drill bit and an NPT, that's National Pipe Taper, not National Pipe Thread, common misconception. I'm going to go ahead and drill and tap that plug. I'm going to take it off the transmission and prep it for a transmission temperature sender. The nice thing about doing it this way is if I totally screw it up, I didn't ruin my transmission pan. All I have to do is go get a new plug. Uh, it's pretty low stakes and since we're leaving in 36 hours. I feel like that's the right thing to do. So we're going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I spent all that money. So we'll go chalk this up in a vise and do our drilling and tapping over there like civilized people. Come on over here. Just to get us off to a good start, I'm going to go ahead and just eyeball center. That looks pretty good. And then how about there? I don't know. What do you think? Looks pretty good. Looks good. We could play this game all night. Ooh, nice. Okay. Get that re-centered in the vise there. Center enough, let's say. And this is the drill bit that came with my uh, 1 8 inch NPT tap so we'll just get into her I'm not the kind of guy that uses cutting fluid sorry I'm sure some of you are sad but look I'm making big chips look at those chips big old boys Woo! now my biggest worry was that I wasn't gonna have enough meat in there to uh, seal the sensor but Boy, I sure, I think I am. Let me grab my tap holder. Tap wrench, tap, tap wrench holder. Ha ha, I found the missing bolt. Very cool, from earlier. Is this the right kind? I don't think so. Oh, I don't think I own one. I did. Oh, all my tools are public property, so nothing lasts very long around here. I'm pretty sure this is too small. Is it? Oh, oh. I don't know. Too small. We're going to have to do this primitive style. With just a, a regular wrench. Be right back. Don't go anywhere. Dang it. I'm just such a simple guy. Does that one fit? Be cool if it did. Nope.
<laughs> of course it's a 10 millimeter. Okay. Look, I know this isn't the perfect way to do it. You can do it differently. So when you're tapping, you know, you want to make sure you're getting a good start. Nice and straight. Luckily, this is very soft metal. I'm not even sure what it is, so I'm feeling good about it. If this was hardened steel or something a little more temperamental, I'd probably be using a cutting fluid. But since it's not, I'm just going to go do a few passes. It's a tapered thread, so you don't necessarily want to go so crazy with it because all you need is a little taper to get the job done. We'll chase those through. I'm going to go grab the sender and see if that threads in there nicely because <laughs> if it does, I think we, we might be done. Lovely. Boy, I, I really like that. Let's see how far it's sticking into our... <laughs> yeah, so if you look in there, I'm not sure if that's focusing or not, but uh, that looks like pretty good protrusion. It's enough to be fully submerged, and that's mostly all that we care about. So we're gonna pop this sender in there, and I like to use um, this True Blue Pipe Dope. It's vibration resistant. So, seems like a good idea. Yep. Yep. And we're just gonna, ooh, thread that in there. Feels good. Feels really good. My ranch. Snug that up. And the nice thing, you know, the transmission pan in theory is not a pressurized environment. So, this doesn't have to be crazy tight. We just don't want leaks. I think like that feels, let's see. Oh, that feels good. Yeah, right there. Look at that, professional results. We're gonna go put this plug back in the pan. Since we just did all that, I'm gonna give the pan one more wipe in case any chips or dirt got into it. Slap a new gasket on the pan, put it under there, bolt it up, and fill this thing up with fluid. Just a little brake cleaner because just feels right. And we'll make sure we get any crud out of that. It's a inverse flare. And so it, the plug doesn't rely on the threads to seal. It relies on the mating services of the, or inverse, did I say inverse? I meant to say inverted. And um, if there's any dirt in there, it'll cause you problems down the road. That's a regular flare. This is a little more temperamental. And we'll just send it home with a little clicky clack here. Boom. And there we have our temperature sending probe mounted right in the side of our sender. And that should be all we need to get fairly accurate readings of what the transmission fluid temperature is in the pan. Now I know, okay, some of you are gonna say, dude, you gotta measure that uh, at the temperature coming out of the torque converter, man, or you're not gonna know what's going on. And I'm like, I know, I understand that, but I'm not in the middle of replumbing all of my transmission cooler lines. And so I did it the easy way. This will still give me a good idea what's going on. Allison posts the specs for the temps that you want to see in the various positions. So I'm still informed, you know? Don't worry about me. Worry about yourself, would you? This guy's going to be fine. I don't even care about this transmission. I'm just trying to help you. Okay. So earlier, we got that gasket into place. So that this part can go nice. Just real quick before we install it, I'm just gonna make sure that our ceiling flange here on the transmission doesn't look like it's filled with junk. In my experience, the junk has a tendency to just come off on the pan side of things. And that experience continues. And up you go. Just 
just kind of getting one started. There we go. And we'll go get another one started up here. How about this guy? We're just going to go through and snug all these up. And we'll go around. How fun. I know, I know, there's a torch back. I don't care about it. This thing doesn't go that tight. You don't want to over tighten these stamped metal pans. And luckily this wrench doesn't really have a whole lot of oomph behind it. It's not an impact gun. So, so just relax before you leave a comment. We're fine, aren't we? And now we'll put our dipstick tube back in. This one can be tricky. He's a tricky little guy sometimes. Let's see, ooh, I got a good feeling that felt, <laughs> that actually felt pretty good. But of course I left my wrench outside of the bus. So look at that, I got it going on the first try. That actually never happens. Don't get freaked out if this is really hard for you to get started again. Oftentimes it is because it's attached to a long dipstick tube and that tube runs up and it's got brackets and stuff that hold it in place that you end up fighting against. If you struggle, don't freak out because you'll get there and it'll be fine. I'm going to grab a wrench, tighten this up, and let's meet topside for filling this bad boy back up. Interesting fact about these school bus transmissions and something that often throws regular folks for a loop is the fact that the dipstick tube where you check the fluid is also where you add the fluid on these transmissions. In fact, on my bus, that's the same for the oil too, which I kind of appreciate. It's like, why do we need two tubes? You know, they both go to the same place, <laughs> you know? Kind of like, you know, we got one mouth for liquids and one mouth for solids. Same idea, I'm pretty sure. Here is, the good stuff, the Allison Transcend 668. I think there's another one. It's like 669 or 29, or maybe, oh, this might actually be the good stuff. This, I think it, I think the old one was 298 or 398. <sighs> I don't know. It's just really expensive and that's how you know it's good. So we're gonna add to start with, look at that cherry red, you know? The stuff that came out did not look like this. We're gonna just add, I, just to start with, I think, yeah, we'll do three and a half. When you check the fluid levels of an automatic transmission, you always wanna have it at operating temperature with the engine running and the transmission in neutral. So obviously we can't check it right now. So we'll just add roughly what I think is a good guess of what we took out. And I just did this all, same transmission, different bus last week and I think it was four gallons. But this stuff ain't cheap. It's about 60 bucks a gallon or so. I'm being cavalier about this whole process, but the stakes are high, especially if the thought of swapping your transmission is intimidating to you. And it should be, it's not easy. You don't wanna overfill your transmission because what can happen if the fluid's too high, it can get into moving internals and that will cause the fluid to froth and foam. And if it's doing that, it's gonna, the properties of it are gonna change and it's not gonna do as good of a job lubricating, keeping your transmission cool. It's probably not gonna shift properly. Um, and you'll actually probably get some of it coming out of the breather cap on the top of the transmission. That's enough for us to kind of get started and, and see what's gonna happen. I'm gonna check this and see where it's at, but it's not gonna really mean a whole lot to us like other than saying that there's some in there. So that's great. So tomorrow when I take this bus for a joy ride and everything's up to operating temperature, assuming there's enough in there for it to shift properly, which I think there is, we'll be able to pull that dipstick out, get a real reading on the level and put it right where it wants to be. Well, in the heat of the moment last night, it was getting late. Forgot to film a conclusion to that exciting journey of changing the transmission fluid on this school bus, but 
I don't really have much else to tell you other than I'm going to wish you good luck. It's a job you don't need to be afraid of. I hope I made it clear that everything I did underneath that bus really wasn't rocket surgery. I think anybody with a driveway and a couple of wrenches can take this job on in an afternoon, no problem. And there's no excuse not to because that's one component you don't want to have to deal with replacing. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. My name is Chuck Casty. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Just gotta change one thing. Thank <laughs> you.